so in today's class we will going to have a discussion on how to make crystallographic planes from the given miller index so here is the process the process is similar to what we have understood in the last class the first step is choose the origin so you have to draw a unit cell and choose origin at any of the corner of the unit cell second one is take the reciprocals of the miller index given so whatever the values which is given to you you will first reciprocate it mark the intercept on corresponding axis so whatever intercept values reciprocal values that you got is actually the intercepts so you mark those intercepts at the unit cell and then join those intercepts once you join those intercepts you will end up with a plane that is of our interest let us try to understand these four step process with an example so the question which is given to us is to draw a plane which is 1 1 so the question is to draw a 1 1 plane so the process is always be the same first define the unit cell so we have made a unit cell and then we have define the origin as one of the corner simultaneously we have also define the axis x y and z remember you can choose the position of the origin and the position of the x y z axis as per your convenience means every student has a freedom to choose his or her own x y z axis and the position of the origin so we are done with point number 1 choose the origin that we have already done in lower innermost corner the second step is take reciprocals of given hkl index so we have to take reciprocal of 1 1 and 2 which will be 1 1 and 2 will become reciprocal of 2 will become 1/2 these are our intercepts so what we do is now we will project these intercepts on the axis so we have to mark the intercepts on the axis so first we'll go with the x axis this is the position of the intercept at x equal to 1 next y equal to 1 and then z which is equal to half you got i repeat the first intercept on x axis i marked at x equal to 1 the second intercept y equal to 1 i mark at y equal to 1 and the third intercept is z equal to half i mark all the three now the last step you have to interconnect all the three uh, intercepts on respective x y and z axis so we have interconnected them and your resultant plane is the plane of under interest which is being given by miller index 1 1 so in the examination the question can be put in either way you have been provided the miller index and you will be asked to draw the corresponding plane or you have been provided with the drawing 
and ask you to find out the Miller notation. So either way, you should be able to attend to the problem. The process is same. The only difference is it flows in the reverse direction. Let's move to the another example. Uh, this typical slide is made for your practice. Okay, there is a query from Siddhant. Siddhant is asking me, what if a different origin is chosen? If you choose your origin differently, then your x, y, z axis will correspondingly be defined differently. So the position of your 1, 1, 2 plane will correspondingly be changed, right? So the answer to the given problem will be specific to the way you define your origin and the way you choose your axis. For example, in yesterday's class, I quoted one example. Let me go back to that example. Yes, this particular plane. The plane was running parallel to the two opposite face diagonals and we choose the origin in the lower left corner. In this case, our Miller index was 110. And if I alter the position of the origin and draw the same plane again, my new Miller index was 1 bar, 1 bar, 0. So the way you choose your origin, your Miller index will be different. Or in the second case, if the plane is given like the one, this, then the way you choose your origin, the position of the plane will get altered. For example, instead of calling this particular axis, this particular axis as x, I call it Z, then my this particular intercept value will not be equal to one, but it will be at half because this is new Z. So the way you choose your origin and your axis, your diagram of the plane under interest will alter. Is it clear Zitan? Okay, so let's continue our discussion. Uh, this slide is for your practice purpose. What we have here is six different variants of planes marked in unit cell. What you have to do is you have to find the Miller index for each of them. So you remember the process? The process will first define the origin. Remember always while defining the origin, the rule is the origin cannot be on the plane. So you can choose any other corner which is not belonging to the plane as your origin. This is particularly interesting when you attempt to resolve this particular last problem. This particular last problem, this one. Why? Because generally we take the innermost corner as the origin. This point we usually take as the origin. But in the last case, you will not be able to take that particular corner as origin. Why? Because it belongs to the plane otherwise. So what you need to do is you need to define your origin at some other place. You can define it here. 
or you can define it here or in upper side corners maybe here or here or here likewise you cannot have your origin at this point at this point and at this point so you have to remember this while defining the origin and then you have the intercepts given on the axis so you should read the intercepts for example if i try to read the first diagram the intercept along a is at 0.5 means at 1 by 2 the intercept along b is also one half and the intercept along c is at one so it is one half one half one then you will take the reciprocals and put it in the parenthesis in the same way in this middle case the second case the intercept at a is two by three at b it is one and along c it is one fifth so you have to take the reciprocals and then put it in the parenthesis so likewise you can find out the miller index for all given problems uh okay there is another query from the siddhant what if we choose other origin if you choose other origin your definition of the axis will change if the problem is given in the exam your axis are already defined say for example if i look at the first unit cell uh, let me show if i am referring this particular unit cell then you can see the axis are marked as a b and c and you know axis always originates from the origin so if the problem in the examination is such that you have been given the unit cell and asks you to find out the miller index then your origin and axis are already defined in that case your miller notation will be a unique one but if i give you the miller index and ask you to make the drawing then you have freedom to choose the axis and the origin so in that case answer for every student may differ because two different students may choose axis differently or the origin different right so this is about the origin the other one is isn't one by two parallel to the y axis no one by two is not parallel to the y axis why it is so let me show you by drawing this one is your y axis likewise this one is also your y axis this one is also your y axis and this one is also your y axis now where is our plane our plane is running like this let me show you the lower base of the plane our plane is running like this so now my question to you is the green line which is the base of that particular plane is running parallel to the red color arrow or it is crossing the red color arrow answer is it is crossing the red color arrow where it is crossing the red color arrow at position equal to 0 0.5 that is why the intercept of the plane on the y-axis is at 0 0.5 and it is not running parallel to the y axis if it was supposed to run parallel to the y axis then 
its position would have been like this let me show that if the plane was running like this then it is parallel to the y axis the one that i have marked with the yellow line have you got okay good so likewise we have couple of more problems which is marked in this particular slide i suggest you to attempt to solve these problems and uh, if there is any doubts pertaining i will be happy to answer them in tomorrow's class let's further proceed so what we have understood so far is you can represent a plane by three values or three notations which is the miller index of the plane now the question is if i know the miller index of the plane can i compute any meaningful quantity out of it the answer is yes if you know the miller index of the plane you can compute the d spacing or which is also called the interplanar spacing which is the basically the distance between two parallel planes the d spacing or distance between parallel planes is being defined as d suffix hkl equal to a under root h square plus k square plus l square where hkl represents the miller index of the given plane a is the lattice parameter of the unit cell and d is your interplanar spacing you now you might have questions in your mind why we are looking at this particular expression if i know the hkl in what way finding the d value will be useful so at a later stage when we will learn x-ray diffraction you will see the value of d is unique something like the fingerprint if you know the value of d you can actually predict the crystal structure of the unknown material so how one can predict the crystal structure of the unknown material by knowing the value of d i will teach you at a later stage but at this point what is important for you to remember is you can calculate the value of d which is interplanar spacing between two parallel planes from this particular expression from the value of miller index so we have learned so far how to define miller index and by using this expression you can also find the interplanar spacing at this point knowing this much is sufficient now here is the summary so far what we have understood is in a unit cell we can identify certain planes as group of equivalent planes for example if i define the plane to be 100 it is one of the face or if i define the plane as 110 it is running parallel to two opposite faces and if i juggle the position of 110 amongst the abc axis i get 12 possible members they are all being referred as equivalent planes for example the two planes which is mentioned here 110 and 101 belongs to the same family in both the cases your plane will be the one which is running parallel to two opposite faces so they are being referred as equivalent planes so if i ask you to uh, 
tell me the entire family of the 100 plane this one then your members are six of them 100010001 and their corresponding negatives somehow in the sheet means in the slide the negative signs are not visible so i am marking it here your last three members are having the corresponding negative values like like bar 100 0 bar 10 and 00, 00 bar 1 likewise you can also write the members of the family of planes like 110 or 111 is it clear what are the members of family of plane and how can you name them or you can define them okay i guess it is clear now we are moving to a more complicated problem of defining the miller index in hexagonal system the hexagonal unit cell itself is little bit more complicated as compared to the cubic unit cell so defining the miller index is in the hexagonal unit cell is little bit more complicated now the difference between the miller index for the cubic unit cell and hexagonal unit cells is primarily in hexagonal unit cell we have a four index notation like in the previous case we have only three notations representing the miller notation for the unit cell instead here we have four notations we will call it h k i l in the previous case we used to call it hkl so what extra you got one more notation which is marked as this i i is the extra one and remember the i depends on the value of h and k so i cannot be any arbitrary number your i will always be equal to i to be equal to negative of sum of h plus k so whenever you are defining the miller index for hexagonal lattice you should always check the value of i i has to be negative sum of h plus k if it is not you cannot define the miller notation for that kind of plane so remember i is negative sum of h plus k so how one should proceed for defining the miller notation for a given plane let's say we are interested in defining the miller notation for this blue color plane which is shown in the hexagonal unit cell so how do you approach to a problem like this whenever you want to treat a hexagonal unit cell only focus on the basal plane so what we do is instead of looking at an entire unit cell we are first looking at the basal plane the basal plane is shown separately here first thing that you should do is in the basal plane you define your origin so where is the origin the origin is not one of the corner but it is the middle of the face so this particular position is our origin 
I can show you the same thing in the unit cell as well. So this is my origin. And corresponding to this origin, I have, corresponding to this origin, I have three axes, which I have named them as A1, A2, A3. A1 represents H, A2 represents K, and A3 represents I. The fourth notation, L, is basically the vertical height. And I can show you that in the unit cell. This one is your fourth parameter of the index, which is L. So whenever a hexagonal lattice is given, you first make a basal plane, define the origin at the center, mark three axes as A1, A2, A3. Remember, they are at 120 degree each. So the inclination angle between A1 and A2 or A2 and A3 is 120. Now, you might have a question whether always I should start from here as A1 or I can define here as A1 or maybe here as A1. So you can define any position within the basal plane as your A1 or A2 or A3. The only restriction is they should incline to each other at 120 degrees. And remember, you should always rotate in one direction. For example, I am moving anti-clockwise here. So first one is A1, then A2, and then A3. Or I may go clockwise. In that case, from here, the first one will be A1. Then instead of A3, it will be A2, and then comes A3. So either you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise. That is your choice. So let's say we have defined the origin and we have defined the three axes in the basal plane, namely A1, A2, and A3. Now, focus on the base of the plane. Remember, we want to define the HKL notation for a plane whose base is like this. So I replicate that base here on my basal plane, which is precisely the one which is marked with the blue color line. So identify the intercept of this blue color line on A1, A2 and A3 axis. It is easy. The intercept of blue color line with A1 axis is at 1. With A2 axis also it is 1. And what about the A3 axis? A3 axis is little tricky. Your A3 axis is this. And our blue line is opposite to this. So if I extend my A3 axis in the reverse direction, in this direction, I get negative A3 axis. And now you can see my blue line intercept the negative A3 axis at half in the middle. So my three coordinates in the basal plane, the intercepts are one along A1, one along A2, and minus half along A3. So always first draw the basal plane, draw the base of the plane under interest, and identify the intercept of the base with A1, A2, and A3 axis. Now coming to the last coordinate, the fourth coordinate, which is L. That you have to find in the unit cell. Now, L is the vertical intercept, right? So this is your L axis. And the question is, at what position the plane intersect with the vertical axis. 
so the plane is the vertical plane it is running parallel to your l axis am i right the plane is running parallel to the l axis so whenever it is running parallel to the l axis your intercept will be at infinity so you have identified the intercept as 1 1 one uh, minus 1 half and infinity you have to take the reciprocals and put it in the parenthesis so reciprocal of 1 is 1 reciprocal of 1 is 1 reciprocal of minus 1 half is bar 2 and reciprocal of infinity is 0 and i put them in the parenthesis so 1 1 bar 2 0 is the miller notation for this given plane now let's check the value of i whether it is equal to negative sum of h plus k so h is 1 k is also 1 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 with a negative sign so your i should be equal to minus 2 which is precisely be the case so you can always check your i has to be negative sum of h plus k okay uh, nikhil is asking please explain l again l is the vertical position so the vertical axis is your l axis this is your l axis i am marking it with a new new color so this is your l axis the yellow one now question is whether your plane intersects with the yellow line answer is no it is not intersecting the yellow line why because yellow line is vertical line and your plane is also vertical so if two lines are vertical then they are running parallel they are not intersecting with each other and that is why the value of l is a infinity is it clear nikhil okay since we are running out of time uh, we are closing our today's discussion uh in tomorrow's class we will continue to deal with this problem i have one more query before we close let me take that one yes siddhan uh the position of the l axis is from the center of the base to the opposite center of the base so that is your l axis the yellow line which i have shown is running from the lower base to the upper base from the center of the base to the other center of the base so you understood correctly that is your l axis we will continue dealing with couple of more examples in tomorrow's class dealing with the hexagonal unit set so for the time being we are closing our today's class i recommend you to practice this otherwise it seems that you will be able to attend this problem but in the exam when you try to do sir yourself it will not be so the only solution to this is practice practice and practice i recommend you to solve the problems given in the tutorial sheet and on the back side of raghavan's book